Hello girls and boys, welcome to Elementor Tips and Tricks video clips. I received a few emails from subscribers asking me to publish tutorial on how to create off-canvas menu in Elementor. Since that was the most wanted subject or a topic, I decided to go for it. Another reason is the fact that creating off-canvas menu is a piece of cake with Elementor. Elementor Pro, more precisely. Okay, so let's go. Here we have a regular menu in a, in a page header that I want to get rid of and place the hamburger menu icon instead. The icon, the, the hamburger icon, should be a button that triggers the, the appearance of the off-canvas menu. Our menu should slide in from the right-hand side of the screen and then slide out once closed. As simple as that. First of all, I'm going to create that off-canvas menu. And for that very purpose, I'll be using Elementor's pop-up template. So let's go to the WordPress admin and from the templates I'll select pop-ups and then add new from the top of the screen. My pop-up should have a title of course and the title is going to be off canvas menu. Be sure to memorize the title because we're gonna need it later, a little bit later, you see why. Okay, I'll just shut the templates library down because I want to build my pop-up from scratch. Under the settings tab, layout panel, we have to take care about a few crucial parameters. With I'll use 360 pixels, which will make it fit even the smallest known viewport size. Height, height should fit the screen. Content position is going to be top. Horizontal position, align to the right hand side and vertical position to top. Overlay, show overlay, of course. Why? Because this is how you prevent user interaction with all other elements when our off canvas menu is visible or active. Think of it as a protective layer atop of the content. Close button, show, because I want to allow users to be able to close the menu by using button, even though the menu can be closed by clicking anywhere outside the pop-up. The entrance animation is going to be fade in right. That will make our menu to slide and fade in, uh, slide and fade in from the right hand side in the same time. I could also choose slide in right effect as well, but I kind of prefer fade and slide. Exit animation, fade out right, identical to the entrance animation, but this one will be used to make our menu disappear from the screen. Animation duration, point, point 0.5 seconds. General settings and previous settings panels are just fine and no need to change anything here. Let's now handle the styles. So I'm going to open the style tab, background type will be classic, I'll just pick some gray background color, something like 001111, not a pitch black but rather charcoal, image border type and border radius are not required, which doesn't mean you cannot use them if needed, it's optional of course, but I'm okay with the background color only. Box shadow is already set by the default and I'll just leave as is. Now the overlay panel. As I said, the overlay prevents user interaction with other elements on page, such, such as hyperlinks, and I'll make it fully transparent. Why? Because I want to keep the functionality, and in the same time make everything on page clearly visible. So whenever users do mouse click anywhere outside the off-canvas menu, it'll shut down. Close button panel, it helps me to customize my close button, of course. So the position will be inside, remember that we are dealing with the pop-up, so position of the close button can be outside as well, but in this case it doesn't make any sense. As you can see, the button position can be adjusted both vertically and horizontally. Maybe I'm going to need these a little bit later, but at this point I'll just leave as is. And I definitely need to change the color of my close button, it's going to be white, Walter White. Background color is not needed. Now the hover state will be white with the slight transparency like 70%. Okay. And finally, size. The button is too small, so I'll make it a little bit bigger. 24 pixels, pixels is okay. Now the advanced tab. There's only one thing that I'm about to change here and which is the padding. I guess that something like 20 pixels of padding to all four sides of the pop-up is going to be okay. Increase if you think it's not enough, decrease in case you think it's too much, as you wish. Now, as you can see, 
There are many other options under advanced tab but these are mostly needed when the pop-up is used as a real pop-up window. However, since I'm using it to emulate the off-canvas menu, I will not need any of these. So forget about these. And now finally, let's add our menu and maybe a couple of other things below the menu because you can actually use that pop-up as a sidebar and fill it up with plenty of information. Maybe to add the contact info, social links, latest posts, posts, Google ads, whatever. This is where the main menu resides. Everyone needs to open it once in a while, which means everyone will see what's below the menu. So open the widgets panel, then drag and drop the nav menu widget. The most likely you will have to select your own menu here, the one you got created in WordPress admin under advanced menus. In case there's none to be selected here, you gotta go back to WordPress admin and create the menu. Okay, you gotta create the menu first. I'll just leave that abstract menu number one that I use for the testing purpose. That's gonna be fine. Layout. Layout has to be drop down. Horizontal version doesn't make any sense here and vertical version of the menu still shows sub menus on mouse over like drop downs. Okay. Sub menu indicator, I'm going to select Chevron. Chevron is nice. Full width, leave no. I'll get back to this one a little bit later because uh, I have spotted a bug here. I'm going to show you how the bug looks like. Align is going to be a side that will make the menu items align to the left hand side. Another option is to make the items align to the center. However, for some reason, Elementor does not allow items alignment to the right hand side. I'm not sure why, nor I was able to figure out. Toggle button, none. We don't need another hamburger icon because very soon we are about to make our own. Before I continue to style up my menu, let me show you the bug that I mentioned a few seconds ago. Okay? So if I try to make the menu full width, it'll stretch over the borders of the pop-up. You cannot see the menu anymore, but I assure you it's there on the, on the left hand side. It's hidden. Okay? So it's better idea to use custom CSS panel to make it full width if needed, if ever needed, because Elementor is doing something wrong here. All right, uh, I forgot one thing. I want to remove the columns gap and widget space. I prefer to manage these by using margins rather than letting Elementor do it for me, okay? So I'm gonna highlight the section, layout tab, and choose no gap from the columns gap drop down. Now highlight the column and enter zero into widget space and put field. Okay, my menu is still unstyled, so I'll just do the quick style up. First of all, let's add some top margin to the section. As you can see, the section overlaps the close button a little bit. So highlight the section, advanced tab, unlink margin fields, then enter something like uh, 50 pixels to be uh, my section top margin. Now the main menu itself. Highlight the nav menu widget, select the style tab, Text color will be white for a normal state of the menu item. Background color will be transparent. Typography. I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick Josephine Sans, which is very nice and crisp font family. I just love it. Size will be 15 pixels, and the transform is going to be uppercase. Now select hover because we want to main, to we want the menu item to change color when mouse over it. Of course, I'm going to choose that purple color from the logo. I just have to find out its hexadecimal code. So I'm going to need my system application. Okay, and paste background color. Background color will be transparent. I don't want any background color. All right. I could also define a different color for an active state of my menu items, but I'm not going to do that. And if I do, and if I don't do that, the active state inherits hover settings. Horizontal padding will be zero. I already set the padding of my pop-up, which is enough. In case you need to increase the vertical space or spacing between menu items, you can use vertical padding slider. But I'm just fine with with the default. And finally, divider. You can add it if you want to, but I don't think it's necessary. I'll just leave everything as is. Uh, there's one important thing that I should that should be mentioned while editing the pop-up template, and which might be confusing for some people because it was confusing for myself at the beginning. 
okay so whenever you are about to edit something that relates to the pop-up itself be sure to click on a settings icon it's a little cog here a cog icon on, on a functional menu bar as you can see okay it's here so once I'm I, I'm, I'm editing my, my pop-up you can see the the editor panel title that reads pop-up settings okay that's how you know how that that you are editing the pop-up itself and whenever you click on a section or the column or any other widget inside the column you are back to normal so to speak because you are dealing with a page builder and widgets again now I could also make my off canvas menu more interesting as I said and fill it up with some other elements because why you can actually use that pop-up as a sidebar and maybe add the, the contact info, social links, Google Ads, whatever. So I'm going to add the, the, the image widget and some text and maybe a title below the image just to demonstrate the point of what I'm talking about. We can publish our pop-up now. So I'm going to click the publish button. Where do you want to display your template? We have to add condition, of course. And the condition will be entire site. Why? Because we are dealing, dealing with, the, with, the, with the main menu. Main menu of the site. No need to do anything else here. It's all good. So instead of hitting that next button, I'll just hit save and close. If I hit the next button, more setting screens will be open and which might seem confusing for someone. So save and close is some sort of the shortcut. So what's next? We've got our pop-up ready. That pop-up will actually be used as our off-canvas menu. And if you recall, I said at the beginning of this tutorial, I want to get rid of the main menu and actually replace it with a hamburger icon. The icon, hamburger icon, should be a button that triggers the appearance of the off-canvas menu. Our menu should slide in from the right-hand side of the screen and then, of course, slide out once closed. So let's edit the header template that houses the main menu. From the edit with Elementor admin bar link, I can select to edit my page header, like that. First thing that I'm going to do here is to remove main menu. So highlight the menu, right mouse click and simply delete. Next I'll drag and drop button widget to the same location. I'll delete the text, I'll delete the text because I want to keep only the icon. And now the link. We have to stop here for a while because this is where I'm about to create so-called action trigger for my off-canvas menu or a pop-up. So I'm going to click on that dynamic link above and find the pop-up on a list of actions. Here it is and I'm going to select it. Now you can see that my link input field has been populated with the value pop-up and there's a little wrench icon next to it. So click that little wrench icon. Action should be open pop-up and now I only need to tell Elementor which pop-up to open because theoretically there could be thousands of pop-ups, okay? So I'll type in the name of my pop-up which is off canvas menu. That's why I told you to memorize the title of your pop-up. Alright, and there it is. This is how the pop-up trigger is created. Next, alignment button should be aligned to the right hand side and now I'm finally gonna select the icon bar icon I don't know why this icon is called hamburger maybe the more appropriate term would be something like hamba hamburger icon oh that was stupid anyhow now I just need to style up my hamburger icon a little bit so I'll open the style tab typography even though I don't have any text on my button, this is actually where I can control the size of my bar icon. I want to make it a little bit bigger and I think that something like 30 pixels will be okay. Maybe it looks too big at this point, but once I remove the padding, it'll be just fine, I guess. Text shadow, I don't need any. Text color for both, and for both normal and hover state. It'll be black and then slightly transparent when mouse over it. And the background color will be fully transparent. Okay. Border type, border radius and box shadow, box shadow are not needed, so I'll simply leave as is. Padding, default, 
button padding is kind of too much as I said so I'll enter five I don't know five pixels of padding to all four sides that's gonna be enough all right let's see what we've got let's check whether everything is working fine I'll click the hamburger icon hamburger button my off canvas menu should slide in just like that okay there it is now update and let's get back to the front end okay refresh the browser all right looks good however I'm noticing three things at first sight first of all I would love to move the close button a few pixels downward as you can see it's partially hidden by the admin bar even though it will be fine when the bar is gone I just want to remove and I just want to move it a little bit downward second thing the pop-up itself is kind of sluggish I want to speed it up a bit it's too slow and finally there's a strange background to the menu item in focus I don't know whether you can see it or not it's quite subtle but if I open and close the sub menu it's there it's gonna be there all right as I recall this is one of the elementor box no big deal but it's still not resolved it's there for a long time as I can tell anyway let's go back to our pop-up template to our off canvas menu to handle these so first thing click on a settings icon that little cog style tab and then expand close button panel to fix the close button position vertical position I think that 30 to 35 35 pixels will be fine okay now select settings tab and decrease animation duration to 0.25 seconds and finally I need to use custom CSS panel this time to handle the ghost background of the menu item in focus to fix that bug so select advanced one step and expand custom CSS panel so here's what fixes the problem selector menu item greater than a semicolon a colon focus open close curly brackets the background is going to be none okay selector is here is the reference to my nav menu widget menu item is how I refer to any menu item and greater than a column focus is selector that is used to select or trigger the element that is in focus if you wonder about greater than symbol it's here to target element which is direct child of a particular element in this case it's our menu item okay let's update and see whether everything's fine now back to front end refresh browser yep it's all good exactly as I want it to and there it is your off canvas menu made by Elementor's pop-up so what's the advantage of that kind of a menu well I guess you don't need to worry about responsiveness and the breakpoints at which the standard horizontal menu turns into the hamburger menu for instance then if you prefer a cleaner look and minimalism with regards to design of course page header might become very tidy and clean without any text how about the drawbacks well I'm not sure I can mention any particular drawback at this point but I guess that the off canvas menu is the matter of personal choice it's quite intuitive when speaking of usability I'm seeing it quite often lately and I kinda believe its popularity is yet to come so if you like this tutorial give me a thumb up comment share spread the word anything you do will be fine and if you do so I'll make more elementary tips and tricks videos stay tuned and thanks for the support from the bottom of my heart